Uh, my name is Wen Huang. I'm a journalist, and I grew up in China. And uh, when I was watching the last video, the Tiananmen Mothers, reminds me of 20 years ago when I, I was a grad student of journalism in Tiananmen Square, and the move to Shanghai was a very uh, emotional moment. But anyway, in the past five years, I've been doing a lot of uh, translation work, uh, basically introducing, because of my, I'm a journalist, I was more interested in nonfiction works. And uh, I introduced uh, um, writers like Liao Yu's work, The Corpse Walker, and I translated and reorganized the thing. And uh, this year, we did The Woman from Shanghai, which is a <clears throat> collection of short stories about survival in the Chinese <coughs> concentration camps in the 1950s. But anyway, I just uh, today was um, um, really thought about, uh, thought about it a lot today when I came to the to the book fair, because uh, in October I went to Frankfurt um, Book Fair uh, to cover for a magazine because China this year was made the guest of honor, and China gave thir uh, 15 million dollars, and they did such this extravagant uh, show at the the. the at the fair, and then there were a lot of the China uh, the books uh, displayed. But one decent writer, Dai Qing, she uh, during an interview she said, "You know, all those books. There were 76 publishers uh, participating in this fair, but only one voice. That's the voice of the government, which is totally true. The, all the people there there were wine books and books on cooking, books on Chinese culture, and books on uh, suspenses and the children's books, but not a single one on politics or." anything like that. And today when I saw it, came to the book fair, I just thought, oh, what a great alternative voices we're presenting. Well, really, it's a great way to present such a book fair as an alternative to the Frankfurt book fair or to the Beijing book fair. But it is a very important uh, effort for us to really, like in the words of uh, a Chinese writer, he said he's writing because to preserve memory, because uh, within China themselves, a lot of because the official account of what happened in the past is really uh, a distorted uh, uh, account of history. And it is very important to preserve the memories of what happened in the past. And it's also, I was very thrilling to see so many books as being banned and uh, is being on display here. And uh, the other thing is I just uh, want to uh, make a point is um, for many of uh, the writers like grew up in China, we really don't know a lot about Tibet or the Uyghurs. My close experience to Tibet was in 1995. As a reporter for a Western newspaper, we went to Tibet to do a story, and then we got stopped, like uh, 20 policemen, to stop us right near the Tibetan border, and we were sent back to Beijing. And this today was the first time I saw these, uh, you know, I got to your presentation earlier, and to get to know a lot of the, the Tibetan writers, I just think it's very, very important to, for all Chinese writers, not we're just so, focus on the Han writers, but also to know about the Uyghurs and the Tibetans, at least to understand the struggles. And it was a very eye-opening experience. I was very, um, it was very informative. I was very touched by that. And the, uh, lastly, I was just uh, trying to, uh, my impression of the whole thing is today I was walking around the, the band book fair. I saw a lot of uh, the books, um, a lot of more Chinese books than the English ones. And just brings me to the, I guess as a translator, I'm more biased to talking about the importance of translation. Because in China, a lot of writers, you don't even have the chance to get published. Because there was a big debate within, in the, at the Frankfurt Book Fair, a lot of people were just saying, a lot of Chinese writers on the official government delegation saying, we have a lot of freedom there. But our, the, some of the people just argue, if you can say whatever you write, you, you you say things maybe in the past you're not allowed to say, but now you can say, oh, I hate the government. But you can't get anything published. You can't really say you have freedom of expression there. So, but, you know, for those lucky ones who really, like Hu Ping said, who really got their works published, but there is the, the importance of translating them into English. There's huge challenges of translating those works. A lot of people just think, if I know the language, I'd probably be able to, to, to do it. But, it is really involves a lot of the culture, the reorganization, the cultural traditions, how you are able to present to the Western public. And right now, uh, there are a lot, not a lot of the sources because the Chinese government recently have set up this huge translation fund trying to translate more official voices to the West. They believe that uh, China is being misrepresented and uh, we need to, uh, they call fight for the rights to talk. 
And, but on the other alternative voices, we don't have a lot of these, uh, these uh, resources. And the Larry Wood Pan has a great program, the Pan Translation Fund, which in the past has helped two of my books, the Liao Yu book, including, and also uh, Woman from Shanghai, and another work by Kang Zheng Guo, My Life as a Counter-Revolutionary, published by Norton. I just think that maybe this, uh, uh, in the future years, this uh, banned book fair is also calling important the translations. We really need to uh, uh, encourage more of these uh, great works to be translated so people get to know more about uh, China, uh, know about the alternative voices to China. Because when you go to Shanghai, you see the skyscrapers, you see this beautiful, all these uh, GM cars sung there, but what is the true story? What is the alternative voices? Is also, I think it's, uh, it's important uh, for us translators to, to be more active and then presenting a very comprehensive picture of China.